Well, our next talk this afternoon is a keynote on the liberation of data access. Is it time for data democratization? Our speaker is an Indonesian entrepreneur, an investment banker, and a philanthropist. Additionally, he previously served as the Minister of Trade of the Republic of Indonesia. Now, please give a round of applause to welcome Chairman of Ankora Foundation, Mr. Gita Wirjawan. Good afternoon. I've got to make a confession. I'm sort of uh, in a bit of a quandary. Uh, at the same time, I'm worried about missing my flight while I'm worried about missing the point. But today I want to basically talk to you guys about the number of concepts of democratization. A lot of people would have thought that the first industrial revolution would have taken place in the mid part of the 19th century. But some would argue that the first real industrial revolution actually took place about 100,000 years ago. Right? That's when humanity discovered fire. That's when humanity was able to delegate digestive processes to the fire so that eating became a lot more efficient, effective, essentially easier. Then a few thousand years later, there was something big that happened in Southeast Asia that not a lot of people would know about. That happened about 75,000 years ago by way of the explosion of the largest volcano ever by the name of Toba. It's on an island called Sumatra, which is part of Indonesia. It spewed more than 8,000 billion, 8 billion tons of materials around the world that caused thousands of years of winter. And some might even speculate or hypothesize that because of this cooling effect for thousands of years took place what we call the cognitive revolution, which took place about 70,000 years ago. And that was a time when actually humanity got smarter. As a result of humanity's becoming smarter or more intelligent, people started coming up with good ideas, better ideas. One of which was the idea of gifting an individual the liberty and the freedom to express himself and herself, and gifting every individual to have a share of the power and the voice. And that took place about 2,500 years ago, when the Greeks, later on the Romans, experimented with the notion of individual democratization. That was supposed to result in the increase of marginal economic prosperity, marginal productivity for everybody. But unfortunately, it only lasted a few hundred years. And it went back to a monarchical types of political processes or organizations for thousands of years until some people came up with the idea of reactivating that notion of individual liberty in the 18th century. That the idea of somebody's having the freedom to express his views or her views would be important for the sharing of power, for the sustainability of governance, and the economic prosperity for everybody. It has evolved. But while it evolved, the idea of entailing equality or marginal economic prosperity for everybody hasn't really come to fruition. Then it came to an evolution where in 1938, a couple of guys who hooked up in Paris by the name of Ludwig von Miss and Frederick Hayek, they coined the idea of neoliberalism. This was not 
the idea of liberalizing the individual, but it was the idea of liberalizing the markets As in such a way that the kind of laissez-faire type of economic governance would entail economic equality for everybody. And it was perfected again in the 70s and the 80s in phrases like privatization. And that would have been the facade over the efforts by governments around the world, mostly in developed economies, to basically get people away from under the control or being under the control of excessive powers of the government. But the empirical evidence for the last few hundred years, and particularly for the last few decades, has not shown the kind of delta in marginal economic prosperity that it was supposed to be designed for. Then came the 60s when somebody came up with a theory that the capacity of every memory chip was going to double every couple of years. And this sort of exponentiality and the growth of the ability and the capacity of microchips has resulted in ways beyond imagination of many people around the world to the effect of our sheer ability to democratize data. Government's sheer ability to democratize data for the sake of transparency, efficiency, and efficacy. But again, if we take a look at the data, economically speaking, the inequality is still pervasive. The inequality amongst developed nations, developing nations, and also underdeveloped nations is still pervasive in the sense that, as what I alluded to earlier, that it has entailed conversations that have become not only polarized, but further polarizing. This makes it more difficult for people to understand what needs to be regulated. This makes it more difficult for people in the private enterprise to understand how they need to move forward. Now, you take a look at Southeast Asia, which has about eight unicorns, which is part of the 108 unicorns in Asia, which is part of the 320 unicorns in the world. If we take the short or midterm view of where the economic pies are going to go in Asia, it looks pretty sexy. It looks pretty sexy that even Southeast Asia has a very, very good chance of becoming the fourth largest economy in the world in the next 20 years. Now, if we assume linearity in the extrapolation of the economic growth, I think we can assume also that the number of the unicorns in Southeast Asia is going to grow to a far larger number than the eight that we have today by way of the participation of everybody and the economic narratives of Southeast Asia, and also in Asia, and also the world over. But with the conversations becoming more difficult within the regulatory bodies, in terms of understanding how democratization is not going to lead to data dictatorship, I think is expected to result in some sort of a regulatory blowback because of the exponentiality of the problems not being dealt with by the linearity of the solutions. Now, this, I think, is going to be part of the conversation in the near foreseeable future as a result of the inequality, as a result of the polarization of the conversations around the world. In my view, data democratization is going to go forward, but also there's going to be some reviews about whether or not data democratization is going to be completely unleashed. As we're seeing in some developed economies or some developed countries, and now increasingly developing economies, the reaction from the regulatory bodies with respect to the complete democratization of data has shown two tendencies. Number one, the inability to understand and regulate. And number two, the pushback from 
those people that would have been sponsors of the old economic paradigms. This is likely to linger on for the near foreseeable future. So I'm standing up here basically being aware of the short-termism of people wanting to make as much money as possible, but I'm also cognizant of the long-termism, which unfortunately or fortunately deals with issues that a lot of people in the regulatory bodies or government bodies and also the private bodies don't want to deal with, don't want to understand. And I think that's the question for all of us going forward. Thank you very much.